Hey, hello guys, I'm going to answer some questions, uh, some in Spanish, some in, in English. Right now I'm going to start in English. Uh, I got a question here that says, Good, be, good, eve. Ah, good evening, <laughs> good evening. Sir, how do I use a voltmeter in, on, in Spring Layout 6 for biasing? Can, can see it in the app bars. Okay, first of all, a Spring Layout 6 is only to create PCBs. It's not designed to uh, simulate the amplifiers. It's not. It's not for that. It's just to create the PCB layout, and then you're gonna use the. You're gonna create or, or generate the Gerber, so you can send those uh, files to the uh, your favorite uh, manufacturer. So it's not designed for simulation. The only one that is designed for the simulation is uh, multi sim. I do have multi sim. Uh, I've been using it for a while, maybe a few years, and it works pretty fun. It's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty. I cannot complain. I mean, it's not that accurate. Maybe it's not that perfectly accurate. Maybe in the real time, it's, it's going to give you a, a, a different results. Uh, I'm going to show you right quick a uh, example of the uh, uh, amplifier that I that I simulate a few. Yeah, I think a, a year ago. So right now the, we have this. A layout of a uh, high power amplifier this one can deliver up to uh, 250 watts easily and uh, the topology of the IPS is CFA dash XH so this uh, the newest uh, version uh, Mr. P is the one that designed this uh, designs I mean this uh, schematic so right now we have the uh, uh, actually I have six pairs here but on the real uh, the real uh, PCB is just five pairs of power uh, transistors. Right now I have here like uh, six pairs. That, that's too much. <laughs> that's too, way too many. Uh, right now I'm going to activate. Uh, I'm going to explain you about the bias on these circuits. So right now I found out that that I had to change the the, the bias. A transistor to a higher voltage one so I don't know why the BD139 is not working that correctly so anyway I'm gonna change this right now MJE I think it's 3 yeah 340G 340G there you go so I'm going to change that to get a better uh, a bias bias adjustment right now there you go and I gotta save it cool cool all right the only thing I gotta do is now uh, make a bias adjustment. So I need, I need to do is open the the speaker cannot be uh, activated. So I just disconnected the speaker and the input. I have to disconnect the input sine wave. You can see I will place a sort of like a piece of wire to uh, jumper the, the input so this here this area of the circuit is the input so right now I'm going to type it input audio sine wave okay. sine wave is okay sine wave there you go sine wave uh, it's not going to be activated right now because I'm going to uh, show you how to adjust the bias uh, this will work on most of the class AB audio amplifiers. So, I was reading a book. I think I already mentioned many times. Uh, uh, J. Randy Sloan. Uh, he wrote a, a book about uh, audio amplifiers and stuff like that. And uh, he recommended if you don't have the a tool, actual tool to measure the THD, the total harmonic distortion of the audio amplifier, you can adjust the bias to about 47 millivolts across uh, reading. Uh, one of the emitter resistor from uh, MPN to PMP. So I'm going to I'm going to adjust it uh, in that uh, in that way. So I'm going to place the volt meter, volt meter right here, and we're going to measure uh, DC voltage. We're going to place it right here, and you can see I place it on the emitters, the MPN Q117 and a meter of Q118 so I'm gonna measure the the voltage the millivolts it has to be on millivolts all right now I'm going to show you okay this is the trim pad this will represent the trim pad I, I guess I changed the number because it was not 
adjusting correctly because I'm, I, be, I was using the BD139 and I do not have a good results with the BD139 so I gotta use the MJE 340G so I, I was so I can uh, able I be able to adjust the bias correctly that's a correct word to say so I'm here <clears throat> sorry about that I'm going to change this to 1k so I can have a, a more precise bias adjustment and I'm going to change the let me see increment sorry about that increments 0.05 percent so i will have a more accurate uh, bias adjustment so i'm going to close these windows here and we're going to have only this uh, little window so we're going to measure the the bias we're going to adjust it to 47 okay we got 61 millivolt that's too high we got to keep the temperature of the the output so we need to adjust it to about 47 uh, millivolts. So let's do that right now. Okay, let me see. Okay, that's too low. I need to. Okay, too high. <laughs> it's too high. All right. Let me see. Okay, 56. So we're gonna uh, lower that millivolts. The voltage. Sorry about that. The voltage. We're going to lower that. Okay, we got 43.478 millivolts, so we need to increase that a little bit more. Forty-nine, not too so high. Okay, we gotta lower that to about forty-seven, or maybe forty. Uh, Forty-six point five is, is fine too because the Q Q one zero three is the bias uh, transistor that the, that particular semiconductor. It will be attached to the to the Higgsing. It's gonna track temperature uh, according, depending on the temperature of the the Higgsing, it will uh, change the the bias according to the temperature. Right now we have 46.5. I think that's fine because uh, uh, on the real time, the real amplifier is gonna track that temperature. The internal. I learned this from Carlos Melgulial, the from from Brazil. He always. It teach me this that the internal temperature of the transistor is going to change according to the temperature the temperature goes higher the internal res the resistance of this uh, transistor is going to change it's going to be lower so yeah having the transistor in the own um, with the lower uh, resistance is going to uh, deliver more current so that's the hypothesis that we have that is going to change the, the the bias, the bias, the bias value. Oh, sorry about that, guys. It's, um, it's too early in the morning. All right. So we had the bias already correctly adjusted. So now we're going to see the the results of this. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to activate the speaker. And then I'm going to uh, connect the amplitude sine wave. The function generator that's a correct word function generator uh we have one okay one kilohertz let's check what we have let's uh increase this to a let's say let's go with 900 millivolts 900 millivolts sine wave amplitude sorry about that amplitude sine wave let's see how this is going to behave this is a this is meter here we will measure the power outputs what meter i call it what meter wattimeter in spanish so right now we have the THD and we have the this window to see so we can see the sine wave and uh, we're going to increase this to uh, let's go with no that's too much what the hell okay let's go with 50 volts 500 microseconds for division uh, well, let's, let's activate the simulation to see what we have all right we have a uh, 219 watts and the total amount of distortion is 0 0.005 oh that's to 8 ohms low that's pretty good that's pretty good right there so right now i'm going to change the low of this you know the speaker to 4 ohms low to see how much power we can get from this design all right we have 439 watts that's pretty good that's pretty good uh, no, I'm not even pushing the amplifier too much. It's just 900 uh, millivolts. So right now I'm going to increase the amplitude to one volt peak to see how much power we can get from this design. 
let's see all right we got 541 watts and the total harmonic distortion is 0.009 percent that's pretty good okay i'm going to keep increasing the amplitude to see how uh, if, we, if we if we can reach the clipping i want to see how much uh, um, uh, sine wave or amplitude can we inject into the am amplifier so let's going to increase it to 1.1 to see how much power we can get all right so we have 655 watts and it's not even close to clipping yet all right let's continue here Okay, 1.2. Yeah, we got some clipping right now. So that now we have clipping. So we know that at 1.1, the amplifier will still deliver high power, uh, 650 something watts. That's pretty good right there. So that's that's the, the way to do it for most of the class A B audio amplifier. But depending on your Higgsing, if you have a small Higgsing, you cannot adjust it to a higher uh, because it's gonna it's gonna thermally the output is going is going to be really hot, so you gotta be careful with that. So you do not do not go be beyond the 47 millivolts, so to keep the amplifier the outputs not not so hot. So okay, that's the other question in Spanish. Okay, qué dice aquí? Hermano, yo sé que debe estar muy estar full ocupado con su cosa y todo lo demás, hermano. Pero sabe, tengo un dilema desde hace unos años y de hacer un clon de un amplificador marca Q QSS, QSS, no se lee en español. Me gustaría hacerle, hum hacerle humildemente el modelo. Buenísimo, amplificador hermano. Tengo la del diagrama, pero me gustaría que tú hicieras pruebas de mano. Bueno, en verdad estoy muy ocupado. No, no, no te puedo asegurar que lo puedo hacer porque tengo muchos proyectos ahí. Abajo también hay otro. Ok. Ok, el programa que... Sí, Agustín Sota. Eso fue hace un mes atrás. Wow. Ok. Eh, hace un mes atrás. Bueno, el programa que estoy usando, Agustín Soto, es el de Multisync. Y lo puedes conseguir gratis. Eh, que eres Multisync Azul, Blue. Multisync Azul es gratis, pero no, se, no puedes ponerle muchos semiconductores. Pero sí te brega. Pues yo lo he usado. Este... Sí, ese mira, te, te voy a mostrarle cuál es. Multisync. Multisync este, Blue. Multisync Blue es gratis. Solamente lo único que tienes que hacer es suscribirte a ello y bajar la, la, la versión de Multisync que es gratis. Este, ¿ves? Lo puedes bajar, la, la versión gratis. Ahí está. Y lo bueno de, de Multisync Blue es que los, los componentes de, de Mouser. Este, están en el ¿cómo se llama? en la librería del programa que puede, ahora mismo aquí en la librería si vas a buscar un ejemplo un transistor aquí te vas a donde dice database y aquí le pones mouser database y ahí aparecen todos los componentes de la página de mouser y aquí está el grupo, en el grupo tú vas buscando un ejemplo transistores y aquí están los diferentes marcas que están disponibles que puedes comprar en la, en la en mouse, ahora mismo te, está la marca este, Central Semiconductors, hay uno que se llama Dyros Inc., eh, Fairchild, Infineon, Micro Commercial, NXP, NXP Semiconductor, OMS, OMS son muy buenos, OMS Semiconductor, aquí hay uno que se llama R Infineon, RNXP, OMS Semiconductor, Rectron, ROHM, ST Microelectronics, Taiwan Semiconductor, Texas Dintrom, eh, eh, y por ahí para abajo, y hay bastante marca, bastante buena. Eh, <coughs> perdón, la ventaja de, de primero simular este, el circuito es que por lo menos te da una predicción de, perdón que te haciendo ruido, te da una predicción de, de si, el tra, si el circuito trabaja bien. Ahora mismo, este que estoy simulando aquí, yo sé que, eh, que un 95% va a bregar bien. Que no hay, no hay ningún problema. Porque ya se ha sido simulado y es un, un pronóstico. Un pronóstico de que el circuito va a trabajar bien. Bueno, eso es todo, amigos. Este, 
Les voy a dejar el enlace de este video, la parte de abajo, voy a dejar el enlace de eh, Multisim Blue que para que lo empiecen a usar, que tiene ya la librería incluida. Y bueno, eso es todo. Y ya saben que Spring Layout 6 o 5 no puede simular nada. Lo único que puede simular es la conexión que dice test. So the only thing that you can simulate is the test, the connection test. And you can see if you place the this uh, sort of like a needle, you can actually see where it's connected, what stuff is connected to what. All right, that's it. Uh, have a good day, guys.